the first one here is um, open your heart and spirit in love. So the most number number ten on that one is is the love. Your baby fills your energy and and knows your thoughts while you're pregnant, and also when your baby comes out. So your baby, if your energy is nervous and um, scared and anxious, uh, your baby will feel that too, and your baby will be crying like crazy. So a lot of what we do with helping moms and new moms is to help calm them, so that their babies can also be calmer. So. When you go into labor, and if you are planning a vaginal birth, it's very important to learn how to breathe and how to calm yourself. And you also will need to learn to do that when you become a mom, because uh, kids will definitely jar your your senses. So um, we definitely recommend that you open your heart and spirit to love, so that if you can be guided by um, that sense in you of that peace and calm in love, your baby will feel that too. And that will really um, help make a difference. Okay, so then we'll go on to number nine. Help me, or have patience with me with these cards I'm making. Hopefully this will work out. Okay, so number nine uh, is flow with life in this experience as a new mom. And the biggest one that is is to trust yourself. Be like water, the best analogy. If you look at water, water will go and find the least resistance path that it can find. And not only will it find the least resistance path, it will find all the least resistant paths at the same time. So it can turn into air or liquid or solid. And just like in motherhood, learning to flow, you're going to have so many new rules that you're going to be learning and be expected to learn. And it's brand new. You've never done it before. And uh, learning to be able to flow with it. And really what that comes from is that every woman before you in your ancestry um, is a part of you. So your mom, grandmother, great-grandmother, generations, on and on and on, are the makeup of who you are. When you can let that part of you flow, you may not consciously know the things you're going to need to do with this new baby. But guess what? Internally, that wisdom within you does know. So when you can move and be like water and experience this, you can really enjoy um, the time that you're going to have with your baby and learn to be able to trust yourself. Because that inner wisdom is within you. Okay. So number eight is relax and do the best you can. I know. That was a hard one. That was a really hard one for me because I tend not to be one that relaxes very much. So having a new baby and when you come home with a brand new baby, how are you going to relax, right? This is something new and you have a huge responsibility. Well, what we recommend is connect to your breath. And that's a great way to relax. And a lot of that comes back to, right, calming your energy again. Again, uh, The best analogy we can give with this one is if you can act like you're a fulcrum on a seesaw. Babies do not have any emotional intelligence. So whatever emotions they feel, and they're going to let you know. And how they let you know is by crying. So And they can cry and cry and cry and cry. But they haven't learned to talk yet. So them them crying is letting you know that, that they need something. And so... You will figure that out. But if you're able to relax and accept that you just do the best you can, you're going to learn at each moment um, connecting to your breath and, and going with what your best intuition and best um, thing that you can do at the time. You staying calm will help that baby also stay calm. And it may not. The baby still may cry a lot, but at least you'll still be okay with it. And you can keep yourself in check until you, until you can figure out what your baby needs. So... That's that one. Okay, so number seven, trust the choices you make. Listen to your intuition. And that's another one again we say. So you see what you expect and you see what you're looking for. And a lot of that has to do with the beliefs that you have. So if you can understand whatever problem you may be going through or situation with your baby, um, if you can trust that there's already a solution there and it's up that you're discovery of it to be able to find it, asking for the help in, in guiding and figuring out what you're doing. So these are kind of deeper questions. We're not going to get into like the specifics of what you do with your baby when you get home. They're going to go over all that when you go and have a baby. This is just more foundational things to help you um, stay whole and stay well and uh, grow and love and, ex and really enjoy this experience. So number six, you are in charge of your own life. What that? Okay, so 
speak your needs. Ask for the help in grace. Sometimes it's not that easy, but speak it out. Ask for it. You have tremendous personal power within you. You grew a baby and an organ. You grew a placenta. And that's a massive organ that helped feed the baby. That's amazing what you have done or what you're doing right now. So just know you are you are in charge and you can make the choices that you need for your baby at the time that you need it. And um, it's amazing. Just claim that personal power and out of respect of, of being a woman and, and, and having a baby, which is absolutely amazing. So, okay. Number five is... Oh, this is a good one. Let go of the past and embrace each day, looking forward to each moment. Okay, so savor each day with your little one. Even if it's just getting into the shower, celebrate that. That's amazing. So um, time does slow down. And sometimes you think in a day, how am I going to get through this day? That's how tough it can be and rough it can be sometimes. And then the next thing you know, your baby's crawling and walking and talking. And you think, how did I get here? What happened? I was just holding my little baby when I just had this little one. And then now time can just wham up, go by. So savor each moment because uh, each moment is so precious. And uh, I think for many of us, the first baby, it just goes by really fast. And then as each baby, if you have more than one, like I did, you, just, you learn to slow down and you learn to really enjoy it because you know they are going to grow up. So that's just... Another one there that we've learned. So, number four is every experience is a learning experience. So embrace all we learn, even the difficult ones. And this one can really be challenging. Because, uh, I don't know, one wants to learn by the difficult stuff, but that's usually when we will learn the most. Um, I know for me, I uh, passionately wanted to breastfeed my kids. And I just understood that, you know, we were designed as humans to feed our babies with human milk. And it just makes sense. So I was very eager about it. And I did. And I, um, my first one was a smaller baby. She was only 5 pounds, 12 ounces. And after I had it, did all I could and, re you know, learned all about it and did everything that was followed. But after like two weeks, she was not gaining weight. She was only uh, 5 pounds, 12 ounces when she was born. By five weeks old, she was only 5 pounds. She looked like, like a little starving child there. So... We had to start doing some interventions and um, getting assistance. And um, at least with my story, uh, learning through the difficult ones um, that I was not able to make enough milk, which is extremely rare. Only about 3% women go through what I went through. But um, I did have to supplement and then help with it so my babies could grow. And each of them did the same thing. But um, learn to adapt and grow and just learn that um, even though you may be very passionate about what you believe in and what you want to do, sometimes the... Um, outcomes can be a little different so learning to um, learn from it and I did I did learn from it to ask for the help and I'm thankful that we do have options uh, this day and age I probably would have had a wet nurse about a hundred years ago which would have been fine but we don't have those now so because now they do have um, uh, I guess you, donor milk that you can also get which is wonderful so that's my story on that one so just learn learn from it and, and see how you can grow from each experience you're going to go through uh, learning with your little one. So number three is um, forgive yourself and others when plans turn out different than you expected. And that's part of that one too. Um, I think a big one for this is um, depending on what you are in your situation. I'm not sure what your situation is for a lot of women. They would like to have a vaginal birth. And uh, that's just the way God designed it or the, our creator designed it. And all animals have vaginal births. About. So we um, were designed that way too. And then, but many people end up having cesareans for lots of different reasons. And um, some women are okay with it. And hey, they're happy to have their baby. And that's, that's, um, they're thankful to have their baby that's with them. For other people, it's, it's a really traumatic experience. And they feel it's just a lot of emotions and a lot of, um, a lot of difficulties around the situation of it. If that ends up happening, um, just if you're if you want to go to our website you can um reach me if you want i do help help people with that and the transformation of, of healing in those areas um so you can go ahead and move forward and enjoy your motherhood and and all the pieces that are going to come next in your life um even with the unexpected because um having a baby you're so vulnerable you know we plan it's great to have a birth plan it's great to have an intention and to feel really good about 
coming into your birth experience, which is absolutely wonderful. And sometimes the outcomes are just different than whatever we expect. And, um, and just uh, learning to forgive yourself, learn to forgive others who you may be hurt in that situation if that ends up happening. Um, and if that does, um, again, hopefully you can learn and grow from it. Um, I know for myself with my third one, when my son came out and then my wife helped, you know, we helped bring baby, him right up on here. He was our first boy. But I said, oh, he's a little funny looking. And my husband thought, oh, he looked just like my uh, brother Gary. And I'm like, no, he's a little funny looking. And he had little eyes and low set ears. And he was born with Down syndrome. So I was 30 years old at the time. And I didn't really know anybody with Down syndrome. And it was a complete surprise. And a lot of what I went through is I actually had a lot of guilt, especially the first couple weeks. Because the doctors said, oh, it's about 80% chance that it was my egg that caused this defect. They call it a defect, which is not. I have different opinions on that. But um, the, uh, my, sorry, my cat's here. <laughs> but, and, and then, um, thank goodness, a good friend of mine came to visit me who also had a child that was born with special needs. And she let me know, you know, that my son, Christopher, is perfect just the way he is as Christopher, just like my two daughters were born the way they are. And so once I saw that and realized that, everything changed. And uh, thank goodness I was able to um, see with new eyes again. And sometimes when we um, come into motherhood and have a baby different than what we expected, <laughs> it gives us an opportunity to be able to do that. I know for my son, he gave that to me. And he helped me see people for who they really are and their spirit and the beauty they have and the uniqueness that each of us are and uh, each of your children will do that in different ways but I had to forgive myself I felt guilty I thought I did this to him with my egg and what I had to do is um, no it's perfectly designed each child that's born is so um, but it's something it's an opportunity that sometimes with birthing and motherhood that um, those feelings of um, guilt can come in if it does, forgiveness is a beautiful thing to be able to do for yourself and, and for others. Number two is, um, it's okay to come first. Now, this is a really important one. And that's why we're getting up to two. We have one left. But um, when you go on an airplane, the flight attendant will um, say, oxygen comes down. If there's an emergency, the parents put your oxygen on first. Take a breath and then put it on your child and help your child. Same thing with motherhood. So when you come home with your little one and their knees are never ending, which is amazing, right? They depend on you 100%, which is wonderful. But put yourself first. Take a breath. If you're nursing or helping your baby and your baby's crying and you have to go pee, go pee. I, I've taken my baby nursing him while I'm going pee. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you have to learn that it's okay. Put him down. Go do what you have to do. Get something to drink, get something to eat, make sure you're moving around. Make sure you take care of yourself first and really make sure you feel good about it. Because then again, if you get the guilt or the shame or you feel disconnected that that everyone else needs should be taken care of first, you'll get worn down and your cup will become empty and you won't become yourself anymore. So that way you can put yourself first, let your cup get full and take care of your little one as that little one needs but then you can let it overflow and give more easily so that's been a big one for me and giving that permission at each age of their life to know and then they learn to honor and respect you which is a beautiful thing for them and then for them to honor and respect themselves so you're teaching them for them to you know take care of themselves too so you're teaching them by example so all right so the number one and we're almost done uh top 10 uh, beliefs to have for a launch in successful motherhood. The number one is you are perfectly made for this baby to be this baby's mother. And it's a gift. 